everyone, it's Julia. I get a lot of comments and a lot of questions on my channel about free motion stitching. A lot of people struggle with learning how to do it and I get a lot of questions on how I started. And so today I thought I would show you how I did start and what I practiced on and show you the method called the Herky Jerky. A little bit about the Herky Jerky. I had gotten a couple patterns back in, the copyright on these patterns is, is 2000. And so it's been probably at least 15, 16 years ago when I, when I was first introduced to this whole free motion stitching. And I got a couple patterns by, the, by this gal and I think she also has a book and I will try to find and list different um, I don't know if they're still in circulation or you maybe can get them on eBay but I'll list some of that information down below but basically what it is is it's large applique designs that you do a very loopy stitch around the pieces and I would literally do just tons of these large applique piece pieces and I would practice and practice and practice going around them doing this herky jerky loopy stitching method um, and it's, it was a really it was really good practice for me I think the number one problem that people have or that I experienced when I started was just the moving of the fabric and it takes a lot of eye hand coordination to get it right and it just takes a lot of practice. Here's an example of some of the appliques that we are going to be working on today and again I said it's it's large pieces. These are 100% cotton fabrics that I have just put on the back a backing and this is just like a, a quilting wadding or quilting a batting that I that I adhered these to. I still have one more design that I'm going to be doing and so I thought I would show you how I'm doing this and this is a star design. I have a stencil with the star and the heart in different sizes. I'm going to use the largest size of this star and this is heat and bond light that I am using and the heat and bond light is the, the, the heat and bond that you want to use if you're doing any stitching and it comes in the purple package. I picked mine up at Walmart. Again just tracing the star through this stencil. Just going to rough cut this out with a, pa with a pair of paper scissors. And then going to iron it on the back side of this yellow quilting fabric or cotton fabric. And now I'm, I'm going to fussy cut going around this star. It's easy to peel the heat and bond off the back of the piece. And now ironing this onto my my quilting fleece. I'm going to set up my sewing machine next and show you this herky jerky loopy movement that I'm going to be doing all the way around these pieces. I'm going to be using black thread not only because so you can see it better but honestly I use black thread a lot when I do my applique or like a brown thread um, it kind of gives it like a sketched on kind of look and it's kind of messy and I just I like the look and so I'm going to go ahead I'm setting up at the sewing machine and so you can see the next step. I have my free motion quilting foot on sometimes it's called a darner foot you can, if, you, if this foot did not come with your sewing machine, you can purchase these. Amazon has them or just contact your local sewing machine dealer and they can help you find the one that is correct for your sewing machine. Sewing machines either are a short shank or, lo or a long shank and so you do have to get the right one that fits your machine. The other things you have to do is drop your feed dogs and in certain sewing machines this isn't a different 
sometimes there's, it's on a back lever or a front lever. On this particular sewing machine, this is a Janome, it's on the side. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop my, my feed dogs. And I'm going to be doing the motion in this. Some of the different literature that I have read and mentioned that you should, you may have to lower your um, stitch length down to zero. I don't have to do that on this machine, but if you find that you, if it's not working out for you, you might want to try that also. Oh, the only thing I do is do my foot and drop my feed dogs. I just lowered my pressure foot and you can see that you can freely move this and that is what's so nice about the free motion foot. It's you are you can just go anywhere you lo you want. It's awesome because you don't have to lift up your pressure foot to turn. You can go sideways, you can go backwards, you can go left, you can go right, and you do all the moving. When I start, I I start and I do a little wiggle. That kind of locks the stitch. And then I go ahead and clip this off. And then you're going to see me go. And it's going to be just this loopy, crazy stitch all the way around this. And this just really helps you learn how to get that motion right. I don't care if I'm crossing stitches. None of that matters. It just You're just going to be doing this very freeform stitch. It's very relaxing. There is no rules, which I love. At the end, I'm going to again just do a little wiggle. My sewing machine has an automatic cutter on here, so I just cut my thread and I'm on to the next one. Here's a close-up of this crazy stitch. What I like to do with my practice appliques is just cut around, leaving a little bit of the, the cotton batting sticking out. And I use these for patches. They're cute on little zippered pouches, um, whatever you want to do with them. They just add a cute little, real homespun look, look to, to whatever you're creating. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope this answers some of your questions and gives you some confidence in trying free motion stitching. Once you get the hang of it, the, and the possibilities are endless. Have a great weekend you guys. We, we actually up here in Minnesota had our very first um, school late start. We have icy roads and it's just a perfect start of a weekend in my sewing room sewing. So thanks so much for watching. Bye.